Hello and welcome to another video. Thanks for tuning in, number one. All right, so today I'm gonna do a little bit of fishing, try my luck as always, but special thing going on today. Now I've been fishing Simcoe for a long time, years and years, and it seems like the water is going green a lot quicker than normal. Usually we used to get to the end of June into July before the lake really turned green, and now it's happening right away in May. What I also find is that the weeds aren't coming up as quickly as they used to. Normally, fishing for pike and other species around here in this 10, 12 feet of water, I'm looking for weeds, and those weed beds aren't popping up. I thought maybe last year was just a, a special year where the weed beds and my spots didn't grow, but it's the same scenario this year. And what's gonna contribute to that is the algae. Algae uses a lot of oxygen to grow, and that's what's killing the weeds from coming up. The weeds also need oxygen as well as the fish. So the fish in these areas have less oxygen in the water and they're gonna move somewhere else. So today I'm gonna to take these bottles and take a couple samples around the lake here and I'm gonna send them off to a lab to be tested. We're gonna test for how much algae is in the water and any other little microorganisms and just see what's going on. Now for sure the government and other agencies do this, but they don't really tell us the information. I don't think it's really public knowledge. They do it for their own research. So. Today, I'm gonna to take those samples and tell you what's going on with the water. All right, so I'm gonna take this bottle right here fill it up to the appropriate amount. Then there's an additive that I have to put in to preserve it, to get it shipped to the lab. So first spot, here we go. All right, first sample taken. I know the time it is 2.40 in the afternoon from 11 feet of water, but just underneath the surface. So not the surface water itself, just underneath like if you're picking up a fish. Now are we gonna solve the mystery of this lake and going green? Probably not, but over time doing research and making a database of the, the findings, maybe we can pinpoint a certain time of the year and why this algae is growing. So location number two, just got here. As you can see, we're in 34 feet of water. This spot here is between Sybil Point and Jackson's Point, and this is where we ice fish. There's a couple big hut cities that show up here to ice fish during the winter. I thought it'd be another good spot, um, sort of wide open on the lake here to take another sample and see if we get different readings versus the shallow water over by Georgina Island. So. With that being said, let's get that sample. All right, there's our second bottle. Let's get that sample. All right, there it is. I'll put a couple markings on it so we know where it came from when we get the analysis. And we'll go from there. All right, now that we have our package ready to go, we're gonna ship it. Hopefully it gets there. See you later. Breakfast break. Always eat your blueberries, very good for you. I really want to help improve the quality of this lake. 
this lake is home to me and many of you watching. I think Simcoe definitely needs some more attention and if we, just regular people, <laughs> have to get involved to clean it up, let's do it. I don't mind paying for this, uh, it's out of my pocket, but I want the lake to be healthy and we have to start somewhere. So hopefully these lab results come back with some findings and we'll go from there. So I'm really excited to do this. Hopefully you're excited for the results because let's clean up Lake Simcoe. So we're all dying to know the results, right? I know I am. We got this paper back from Enviro Responsible. Here's the cover letter with the logo. Uh, based out of Kingston, Ontario, and an amazing company to deal with. Super friendly and professional. Answered every question that I had because I have no idea about any of this, to be honest. This gets very specific, which you would expect out of a lab report. But I'm gonna go over things that I understand and probably you would understand. All right, so the samples you saw me take previously in this video were analyzed under a microscope up to 40 times magnification just to see what was going on. Now, to my surprise, the algae density in both these samples came back very low, but with one dominant species, the diatom Astrionella formosa. Forgive me if I say that wrong, that's what it's called. Now, no toxic species were present, which is good, but a zebra mussel was found, which means it was floating at the top of the water where you saw those samples taken. And I had no idea that zebra mussels, tiny little microscopic portions of them, are actually floating in the water. Now, if you see this picture, this is one of the pictures from under the microscope of what that looks like. We're never gonna see that, but it's actually there. Now, along with these other photos, these are the little tiny microorganisms floating in the water. Now, maybe don't let your kids watch this, but it's nothing to freak out about. Of course, go swimming in the lake, but that's what's in there. It's pretty fascinating, actually. I never thought zebra mussels would be floating around at the surface of the lake. Typically, we think they're on the bottom, those hard little shells, but before they come to that stage, that's how they get around the lake, and that's how they spread so easily. It makes total sense to me now. They don't just crawl around, float around the bottom to get around. When they reproduce and the eggs are actually floating throughout the water column, which is exactly why it's an invasive species and takes over a lake instantly. So as you can see in this document, very technical. I don't know if you can read some of those words, big words, not for you and I, but it breaks down what each little thing was in the water. Now these are not toxic as it stated, which is good. These are things that are found in the lake on a typical day, but really cool to see we have four different organisms living in the lake from those samples. Now, if we want to get really technical, that first diatom that I tried to pronounce earlier, the bio volume in that sample per milliliters cubed per liter was 0 0.0636, tiny very minuscule amount, but it was there. <clears throat> As you can see, we got this chart back. Again, hopefully you can see that in the video. Labels everything that was there. Very technical, but very good. I wanna keep this on file personally because I wanna do this again. And I'm gonna keep this and over time, I could always come back to it and watch the numbers. Basically, I'm starting my own database. Because why not? <laughs> I want a healthy lake. So if I start doing this now, over time, we can get some good data and see exactly what's going on. We have to start somewhere, so this is it. So again, we have this whole chart laying out what was found in the samples. Really cool, really neat actually. I should do more research personally to understand this better. But for our sake, the lake came back healthy in these samples, which I was hoping for, but I also wanted to find something that maybe shouldn't have been there to act on it sooner. Now I'm not going to complain because despite the lake being green and thinking we were going to find something in here, I'm happy that it came back, the lake is healthy. Uh, the algae level was down. Now these samples were taken towards the end of June when I started making this video and I've been waiting for the results and just time to put it together. So now this was just my first attempt doing this. Uh, I'm doing it out of my own pocket. This actually costs hundreds of dollars to do. Personally, I think it's worth it in the future hopefully get some funding to continue doing stuff like this. But I'm just gonna grow my own database and share it with you and what we find in the lake. We wanna keep this healthy and 
it's up to us, really. If we can do any little thing to, to keep it clean, we should. I know agencies do what they can, but if we start helping out on our own accord, it's only gonna help out that much more. So that's what I plan to do here. No big breakthrough with this, but hey, I'm happy I did it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And let me know if you want me to continue doing this. I'm probably gonna do it anyway, but let me know that you found it valuable and a good idea. So I had a lot of fun doing this video, taking the water samples, sending them off to a lab. Never done this before. So it was a really cool experience. Again, Enviro responsible, amazing to work with, very friendly, professional, and I will definitely use them again to keep growing this database of what's going on with our Lake Simcoe. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments what you think. So until next time, you stay safe, happy and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.